Hello and welcome to uh, the final episode of season three of the podcast. It's episode sixteen, I believe, uh, but it's our last one. We're gonna we're gonna take a bit of a break. We may come back with a few sporadic ones over the summer, but uh, yeah, seeing as the nights are pulling out, and uh, you know, Stuart won't be here for a couple of weeks. You know, he's, he's ruined it for us, really. We thought we'd use this as yeah yeah. We thought we'd use this as a natural break, so. Uh, you know, we thought we'd let you know because we know how you get very, like, you know, upset if we oh. if we suddenly throw it on you. Did you see the comments on the Facebook page? Oh, I yeah. couldn't believe it. I felt really guilty posting it, reading those comments <laughs> that we'd missed a week. <laughs> oh my God, oh, my life is ruined. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, um, I did see some other comments as well before we before we get going. That that there's quite a few people who are surprised that any women watch us after Dave. I don't even remember what you said, Dave. Did I say something? Apparently, yeah, apparently oh. two or three people said, um, um, I'm surprised that there are any female viewers after Dave's comments. Well, I, thought, I don't even know what you said. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, I we can't remember. It was let, anyway, let me just apologise to any female viewers because, you know, uh, even though we're going to talk about personal traits later, I would say that misogyny is not one of mine. No, and I don't think you need to apologise because, you know, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're only women. <laughs> <laughs> don't mean that, obviously. Totally don't mean that. Um, but no, if you are, if you are a, a female viewer, let us know. You know, if we go too far sometimes, or let us know what you enjoy about it. I know, other than you know, looking at Darren and Jamie, let us know. Oh, and Sam. Oh, in fact, all of you. Sorry, I don't want to single everybody out. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was just me and you, Jay. I felt yeah, quite no, special. I was happy for, with that. For, for a split second, I felt quite, I felt quite good about myself then. <laughs> yeah. So, and and if you want to, I'll put a poll up for all the ladies. And, you know, gentlemen of a certain persuasion, which which, which one of us do you <laughs> The LT Plus. <laughs> which one of us do you find the most attractive? <laughs> Uh, well, the this is just going to be a mass of trigger warnings now. Yeah, well, it? It, it, at the end of the day, this is the last one, and it, you know, it could yeah. be the last one ever if it goes really badly. But um, <laughs> it could be cancelled yeah, after tonight. Yeah, yeah. 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 No one will ever want to speak to us again. Wait till you see what we've got when we start talking about. You know, we've got a good rant coming up as well, so that could cancel us. Anyway, um, <laughs> what, what have you guys been up to this week? Anything exciting? Well, I've uh, yeah, I got so <clears throat> we've. Well, obviously redone the kitchen and uh, we're having a bit of a revamp of uh downstairs and helen like very kindly she said you know i'm really fed up with kind of just looking at our original works of art you know kind of like lowry's and picasso's and you know all that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. she said why don't you print some of your photos and we'll have your photos um you know kind of downstairs I was, oh, that'd be really good and i've really enjoyed myself kind of this week kind of going through back catalogues and and uh and literally kind of printing off loads of prints anyway so what i've done i've printed them off on a4 but mainly a3 and i've stuck them in like a, a cellophane wrapper and i've put them on the on the kitchen table and we've got quite a big kitchen table so there's loads of loads of prints on there anyway I think it was like Thursday nights. So I've been printing for about three or four nights, and um, my daughter came in, and uh, she said, "Hi, hey, Dad, how you doing?" So I said, "Yeah, good." Anyway, she kind of went through into the kitchen, and all of these prints are out on the on the table. She said, "What are you doing?" So I said, "Oh, you know, we're thinking about putting some of my photos up, kind of on the wall." And then she looked at the photo in the middle, and she went oh she said that photo she goes that's incredible and that was the only photo that wasn't mine right <laughs> <laughs> so i bought a photo from adam gibbs and um and that was the photo and my only saving grace is that i bought a photo from stuart which is also going to be they're all being framed at the same time but that one i is in in the box still because i thought 
oh, if that one was on the table, and then she would have said, like, oh, and I like that one as well. So, yeah, so I, I, um, I, just, I just thought, oh, good. And I laughed about it, and she said, yeah, she goes, that's the only one I really like, the rest of crap. And I thought, God, I always like, bounced my camera off of her head. So, uh, yeah, so, Adam, if you're watching this, I've unfriended you, I've uh, taken you off of all social media. Um, but, yeah, I thought that was really good. Uh, have you got you haven't got them up yet no they're not up. no no they're all that nothing's oh, been framed yet i'm getting enough to um yeah. to take to the framers you know what i was thinking we, if you'd have had them all up we could have done like a you know like mtv cribs do you remember mtv cribs yeah we're like welcome to my crib and we could have done a little little you know little overlay of you showing us you know your, here's my new kitchen and you know here's oh. adam's have i frozen like, or have you frozen no, here's my, no, here's my living good. room and you know, here's Gary P. Stewart's picture there, and there's a few other rubbish ones. That... He didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you froze, froze, the, there, you froze for a little while. Do you know, I that reminds me, right? Anyway. <laughs> that reminds me, sorry, I'm taking over now. My, I think I might have told you this story before, but I used to ring my mum every day on the way to work, right? And she could just chat, chat, chat. And there was one particular day, there was a phone call came through, and I just thought, oh, I'll just cut her off. Or, you know, and then she went, and I said, I went through a tunnel and I, and I cut her off and I took this phone call to do with work. I was on the phone for about five minutes anyway. And then I realized she was still on the phone. So I pressed like the button again to get her back and she was still chatting. She didn't even realize I'd gone. Didn't even realize. Oh Bless her. Uh, well, I didn't say anything interesting anyway. So you're all right. Um, anyone else had anything exciting going on this week? Oh, hang on a minute, though, Dad. You've got something else, haven't you, that you uh, might want to announce for this week? Haven't you got a little purchase? <laughs> Haven't you had a little purchase, Dad? <laughs> Twins, Jay. Twins. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, yeah, it is a purchase. It's and it's a brand new purchase, but it's a brand new purchase of something that I used to own, and then promptly sold. Um, so yeah, I've just bought the new. Well, I've just rebought the uh, Sony 100 to 400 G Master. Again, same as what Jamie shoots with, and I used to own because it was too heavy. Um, but after two years, I realised that was a, an amazing lens. That and uh, my 200 to 600 is just too big for me to carry around if I'm not particularly going out shooting. So if I was going to a nature reserve with Helen or something. I don't want that kind of hanging down by my side so i just thought i'll buy the 100 to 400 again it's not overly heavy i can put it on a strap walk around and if there's a shot then i'll take it if not then it's it's light enough for me to carry around without worrying too much so yeah so I rebought that nice nice anyone else bought you bought some out you jamie yeah i bought a new monitor i've changed i've had another you know i don't sit still in this office always changing things around so i've got a new desk that's exactly the same as the desk i've got but effectively now i've got like a horseshoe shape of two desks together and i'm in the middle you know the bridge um so that meant i needed a new monitor so the monitor that i was using for work and also for color editing uh, i've now ordered a monitor that i've got here for color editing alone which is a uh and I, I don't know what it is it's one i got from wex and asos something or other um asus you, you don't know what it is <laughs> well i do know what it is but I, it's, I just it what it is i don't care what it is <laughs> Give it's a monitor. color it's a proper <laughs> color Kalman certified monitor that gives me better color gamut than the um lg one that i've got before okay. which wasn't you got it was the all right but you like i've got the benq screen bar on top of it absolutely yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> big up the benq screen bar yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay so, yeah, anyone, like, anyone else bought anything recently no, I bought Burger King today on the way home from Derby, <laughs> um, which was, you know, nice. Um, I've had a me I've had a nightmare this week, personally, absolute nightmare. I, I I called my I called my Sony a Canon on my video and and didn't even realise that I'd done it. So I went, oh, I've got my I'm out today with my Canon A7R3 and. I must have edited that piece like 15 times and never noticed it. And then everyone, like, because, you know, in the comments, people are very generous, aren't they? Go, okay, he obviously meant Sony. We'll, we'll let him off with that. We won't mention it. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. He's in Canada. Straight on you. Yeah, he's in Canada. Why, why would you care? 
Why uh, do people yeah. care? I, I, I care because I feel like I'm going, like, you know, a bit senile. Because, like, you know, I'm like, Christ, I, never, I didn't even spot it, you know. And then today I went, I dropped my daughter back off into Derby. I parked um, uh, outside her university halls of residence and uh, and 70p, right? 70p it costs you to park. I had 50p. I didn't have the other 20p, right? Hello? It's not me. Right? Oh. Every week. It goes off at the same it's, time. It's it? me every week now, sorry. Yeah. Right, so, so, so 70p. I didn't have the 20p, so... She's like, well, why don't you just use the app, you know? Like, really? I had, to, I had to QR scan it, and then it comes up with this website, and then it asks you to put the where you're going, uh, where you're stopping, and then when, and then for how long, and then you have to put in your, your registration number, and then you have to put in all your details, and then you get verified by Visa. And verified by Visa, because, you know, I'm going senile, I put the wrong three digits at the back instead of I put the digits the wrong way around. Then it sends you a code, I put the code in, it said, oh, no, sorry, no, not valid. <laughs> I was like, oh, right, oh, I know what I've done. I put the thing in. It sent me two more codes, not valid, and then it cancelled my card I online. Oh, God. With a so passion. Then I, so then I had to spend 45 minutes on the phone to the, to the cooperative bank, right on hold, just to say, oh, I tried <laughs> to spend 80p and it went wrong. Can you please let me have access to my so, online so banking again? Two parking tickets and a clamp later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, don't like to moan. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, what about you three? What are you are you haven't bring up to anything like Sam, Dave, Stu? I cut my I cut my hair successfully this week. Oh well done. Well <laughs> done, <laughs> mate. Oh, thank you. Good I've work. been taking pictures of a derelict toilet. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, what, what was, was all that, that about? Yeah. Well I was commissioned to do a uh, a photo series and some videos. Toilets of our of this, time. Yeah, <laughs> of this derelict house that's about to be done up. And it, inside, uh, there's there's that toilet. Um, there's also in the kitchen, I don't know if anybody's seen this series on, um, I think it's Amazon Prime, called The Last of Us. With the, um, yeah. the, the fungus. No spoilers, no spoilers. No, 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 but the credits of this where all this fungus oh, kind yeah. of grows yeah. out. Yeah. I walked into the kitchen, nearly pooed my pants because all up the wall was this fungus. <laughs> it's like I was just looking around for a walking morel to come yeah. and eat my neck. Uh, but yeah, and, and there was no light. I mean, it, it's all boarded up, so I, it, it, it was quite spooky. Last of Us, by the way, is excellent. If uh, if yeah. if you haven't watched, that's on it, Sky, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's yeah. so yeah. good. Some really hot man I love. Can't get it. Yeah, <laughs> the acting's great as well. I've got to say, the acting. Yeah, great. but Ron Swanson getting involved with a chap was, that was kind of weird. That was a brilliant episode. Got to say, can't don't want to talk too much about it. But what a brilliant episode! Uh, you know, uh, yeah, brilliant episode. Uh, Sam, what about you? No, I've not been up to anything. No. Um, okay. I was hoping to meet up with um, a photography friend uh, over on Sky last weekend, but she couldn't. She couldn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, she had to cancel. So, oh. so no. Other than that, no. Oh, okay. Got a workshop this weekend. Oh, have you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nothing um, interesting. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. No, it's fine. It's okay. You don't have to be. You don't have to have anything interesting this week. It's. it's I must admit, okay. he, he started off slow. You wait till we get onto NAS drives. <laughs> I was going to say that. That's a nice it, little. That's when the fire that's... really yeah. begins, and it's. Um... <laughs> I've, I've I've got lots of exciting stuff to 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 talk about in this in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we'll look forward to that. Seat. We'll look forward to that. Um, should we should we move on to some comments then? We had lots of comments. Um, what do we have? Less of an, oh, oh, we've already spoken about the Facebook, haven't we? Um, mm. With everyone being incredible. See, do you see? I didn't even remember it. I, I was almost. I was about. Oh, let's. I tell you what. Let's move on to talking about Facebook and Dave and you know misogyny, which you're not, Dave. I'm not saying you are. By, by the way. <laughs> um, and and we've already talked about it. So um, yeah. Anyway, oh, a lot of people liked your accents, by the way, Jamie. Oh, yeah. I think, what yeah, was not that. to like? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, well, no. I think <laughs> when we come back next year, we should make that a weekly feature. Yeah. No, we'll call it Jamie's Accents. 
to be fair, even Leslie watched it and she said, you're not that bad. I was expecting her to sort of say, you idiot. But she actually <laughs> said, it was all right. It was, it was brilliant. I got away with it. It, yeah. it was great. It, I, seriously, it was really good. I thought it was really funny. Yeah. Do you want to do any accents no. while we're here? No, 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 no. no I'm fine, sure? No, I'm all accented out. Throw in a Swedish, Swedish accent? <laughs> no, no. Huh? I'm fine. I'm fine. He was tempted there for a minute. You see, he was thinking, what can I say? Broody brood. Um, right. Um, what else? Oh, Nick Nichols says, uh, it'd be interesting to see self-portraits from the podcast members seeing that landscape and wildlife photography are your go-to genres. Do we fancy doing self-portraits at any point? He's watching. Have we not already got yeah. those on our avatars? Are they not self-portraits? I guess What so. do you mean? Well, well you know, like the headshot for, for YouTube, your channel and your Facebook and all that malarkey. Yeah, but I don't get the question. What no. What we can question? just freeze where we are now. This can be our self-portrait. Yeah, just yeah. do that. He just yeah. said he, he thought it might be interesting to see if we were to do a proper self-portrait of ourselves, what what would it look like? Since Does he mean like an, an, well, my, an? Mine looks like my avatar. <laughs> hmm. And trust me, it don't get no better than that. No matter how much Photoshop <laughs> tricks you know, that's it. It doesn't. My face. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, let's have a look. What else have we got? Uh, well, we got we got a question from Chris Toombs, which we'll which we'll come to. Um, uh, uh, Joseph Weaving says, "Absolutely brilliant information and humour to top any TV comedy, like anything. Wow, like Foley wow. Towers, no, uh, podcast, <laughs> Father Ted, podcast. high praise, Only Fools and Horses. No, get out of no, it. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, but the royalties aren't quite so good. <laughs> no, they're well, not no. zero." essentially what's our appetite our, our ad budget now how are we looking what how much are we earning would you like me to yeah. say how many yeah because we're going to offset it against this huge bill you've landed us with for yeah. this video <laughs> are, are we that registered yet gal that's what i need to know yeah. have we what VAT registered? Are, are we that registered yet <laughs> no VAT registered no i don't know i don't know if our turnover has gone over 85k is it no <laughs> yeah. fat, fat threshold limit yeah uh okay so the last 28 days do you want to know how much, how much we've earned in the last 28 days go on mate have a guess go on have a guess well i've just bought the 100 to 400 on the strength of our ad revenue yeah nine pounds 70. oh you're close seven sixty four sixty eight pounds 67. Eight that's how much ad revenue we've made uh, when you consider this cost 25 quid a month <laughs> it's eight pounds sixty seven. Great business model, is it really? Not really, no, no. not really, no. Gary, we um, need to be plugging the uh, the super thanks button. That's what you need to be. I haven't put it in. I I'll do that for this week. Actually, that's a really good idea. I think I can add a super thanks button. So if I can, I'll put it in for this week. So if if how many people watch? Three. Three. So if you could all super thanks. All us. three of you. Yeah, that, that'll double, that'll almost double our monthly income. And it'd be very much appreciated. Um, That's three out of the five people, six people. I, I'll it. tell you, yeah, try and put it in and, and I'll, I'm will i going to donate or whatever it is because all that money's got to go to you, Gal. For Don't donate it to them because they'll take some. Just send it. In fact, <laughs> I'm, <super laughs> I'm just going to put my PayPal yeah, just, details down below. Yeah. You, you should know all week. this hard yeah. work that you do every week tirelessly. Oh, yeah, spend yeah. hours and hours. So yeah, I don't want to talk about it. You know, just, don't you know, don't talk no, about it. Yeah, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. I'm going to start a website called Buyers a Pint. And but I'm not going to take a cut so that people can contribute without it coming out of the revenue for the people that receive. I think that would be quite cool. That'd be good. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to stop you, Dave. Yeah, I'm, but I think buyers a pint is a, is a better thing than coffee because yeah, coffee is for pints TLT plus people. Pints are more expensive. <laughs> buy us a pint. Buy us a pint in London.com. <laughs> i tell you what, I'm still surprised my local is still doing Guinness for 480. And everywhere, where, everywhere where I went in the lakes, it was like six quid to six pound fifty. I still, oh, think, I mean, wow. that's gone up a lot. It used to be four pound thirty around the pub. 
it's 480 now, but yeah, they're still cheap compared to the lakes. I tell you what, if they chucked in six tomatoes, I'd be interested. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Why six tomatoes? I can't, can't get tomatoes. Oh, can can't you not? Buy them. No, I can't no, get tomatoes, Russians. cucumbers, peppers. Leeks are next. I mean, what are we going to do about leeks? I've got no idea. My pizza tonight was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Turnip pizza. Turnip oh, pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's what we. That's what you've got to do. Unfortunately, if you can't, yeah. if you can't afford to buy the food now, you're just going to have to upskill yourself or eat turnips. So. Um, yeah. It's like a black adder, this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, there's, there's so many more comments on here, and thank you so much for commenting, but I can't, I can't be asked um, to read them out. <laughs> we uh, do appreciate your comments. <laughs> yeah, we do really. I like reading them. Do you want to know the truth, essentially? Because I was on the phone for 45 minutes to the Culp Truth Bank, literally before I come online, I didn't write down or make a note of any of the comments, so I'm scrolling through them now. It like, shows. Panicking. Um, you're not normally as, uh, as as unslick as this oh, so normally you're one. far more together it's the last one no you know it's like he's not de davis de edit, mob happy no. with de mob happy we know what it's like behind the scenes yeah yeah, yeah. Robert, we should have brought in a game we should have brought in kaplunk today <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that's what we should have done the whole game should have been us just doing yeah. kind of kaplunk <laughs> did, did, you, know? you know that bringing a game Buckaroo. to last day of school did yeah, you ever have the one teacher we had the one teacher who used to we used to go to his class and his games were maths games that he'd made himself oh, so it's like oh draw this exciting graph it's like like everyone else is playing simon and you know like kicking a football around the class and we've got to we've got to draw a graph um, there is playing with simon simon you know what school did you go to <laughs> what ball <laughs> store was it <laughs> Well, young, means... young offenders so the institute oh we're playing with simon now he's been ever so naughty <laughs> i've been pushing his buttons he's been making some he's been making some funny noises um robert falcon commented i have to say and he said prepare yourselves for this one ever considered having a woman photographer on your podcast for example lynn lux and jones we had lynn on yeah, that's what we yeah. did. Several couple, more than more than couple once. Of times. Yeah, mm. and, and we did be... ask her to be uh, a regular at one point, didn't we? But we did. she had other commitments and she couldn't yeah, do she, it. She couldn't stand. Yeah, so the, I think uh, that was actually the before that Paul Johnson. About. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We, we did. Yeah. 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 She doesn't right. comment anymore because of you, Dave. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought I made it plain how much of a fan of Lynn I am. Yes, you are a fan. Indeed. She's great, Indeed. Lynn. Yeah. Mm. All right, I tell you what, with that, I might come back to some comments later, but I, I, I doubt it. But thanks for thanks for commenting anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I just haven't prepared properly. Um, let's talk about NAS drives. Oh, no. <laughs> right, before we do, can I get another beer? Because this, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be quite exciting, and we'll go for a wee. Oh, bless you. <laughs> uh, right, so, so as promised, <laughs> I know you've all been waiting for this. I'm going to hand it over to Sam now, and he's going to talk about probably, I mean, how many episodes have we done? Then we must be up to over 100 episodes. I think this is one of the most salient and important topics that we've had uh, since we started the podcast. Sam. Yeah, well, you can tell we've been going a long time because now we're really scraping the barrel with our, with our topics. But um, <laughs> yeah, this was one of those things where I, I, I think I put it in the, the topic chat because at the time I was doing a bit of research in it and, and um, it's file storage. And it's one of those things which we all do and it's not the most exciting thing to talk about. But I was really, I guess, wondering what you guys do. Um, basically, the context is I've recently filled up my latest four terabyte hard drive and I have actually now bought another four terabyte hard drive um, but I think what I'm going to do is buy a NAS drive um, and I was wondering if any of you guys have used them or if you've got any experience with them or if not then what do you guys think is the best way of organizing your files and everyone's just signed off well no okay I, I, I didn't want to <clears throat> so my my iMac is so slow, like painfully slow. Like it, 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 I gave up last night. It's about forty-five minutes to try and edit a photo, and I just wanted to throw something through the screen. And I ended up going onto my um, laptop. 
But I edit, uh, or all my photos are on these rugged, lacy external hard drives. And I don't know if that's got something to do with the speed, because obviously it's trying to, the, the iMac's trying to pull it off of here in order to, to edit it. But I mean, does anyone else work with yeah. solid? Well, a bit, it's... bit of, bit, hmm. but yeah, I could probably chime in a bit there, down because because yeah, that's very similar to what I I do. I think I've got this pretty much the same iMac as yours as well. It's a 2017, 27 inch that's it. Um, yeah. iMac, and actually, so so because I was having the same issue, and we I think we talked about this a couple of episodes ago as well. So everyone's really properly signing off now. But um, yeah, so I've I've. Mine's actually working okay. I've done a couple of things with it. One, I've always stored my files on external hard drives and it was going slow and it was because that external hard drive was getting full and it's faster now I've got a new external hard drive. But also I've used a, there's an app called Clean Up My Mac, I think it's called, or Clean My Mac, mm. which has actually made a big difference. Um, and it, to get to get it to sort of do do a good job, you do have to, pay for it but it's it's i think it's like 20 25 29 pounds a, a year or something like that and i, I think Wouldn't it's you worth just it take it to a dry cleaners it needs it needs that as well to be fair there's a few smears on the screen but, here um... we... we don't want to know about that <laughs> <laughs> but, smears on his Mac. but yeah i think um <laughs> and the other thing you could do with IMAX is you can stick new RAM in them as well, which I've also done, and that's that's always helped. So, oh. so those are things you, you might be able to do. And um, actually, one of the, the there was a comment on one of the episodes recently from someone who was recommending there's a dongle you can get which enables you to use your iMac as an external monitor. Um, and I've just ordered one of those because I'm going to be buying a laptop soon. So I'll then use the 27 inch iMac as a monitor. And I thought that would be a stop gap until I can get around to buying a proper right. monitor. Right, well, it, I'll be really interested, Sam, if you can do that, because I was looking into doing just that. And apparently my iMac, you can't do that. You right. could do it with the older models, but the model that I've got, you can't. But if, if there's a workaround, I'd be really interested in... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Up to, I think, 2016 models will allow you to daisy chain them as externals. But after that, you can't. Um, we this, put this... NAS drives in professionally into businesses uh, over the last sort of 10, 15 years or so. Um, and they're all well and good when you've got an extremely high data business where lots of users need to access files live on an ongoing basis but i don't think it's a good solution for um the sort of thing that we're talking about just like you boys i mean i, I run all my stuff off this little ssd which is a terabyte samsung uh, t something seven um, and the key thing is to have it not running through a daisy chain port but to run it straight into a 10 gig port the USB-C and if you do that it's seamless it's as fast as the internal SSD um, and that that's how I process my stuff now I, I don't have as big a raw files as you as a rule because mine are only 20 meg but when I use the high-res facility on my camera my raw is 80 meg and I can easily end up with a TIFF file with 10-15 layers of adjustments that runs to four or five gigs on a single file and it's completely seamless. Now my processor is a, is the MacBook Air M1 uh, original version. Um, a good solution for not much money if you've already got a keyboard, mouse, that sort of thing is the M2 Mac Mini, which comes in at about 600 quid and is blazingly fast. It's actually faster than the current Mac Pro, which costs three, four thousand pounds, depending on how it's specced, for six hundred quid. So, um, but I, I honestly wouldn't recommend a NAS drive as a solution to this sort of thing. So, My main recommendation would be delete more files. So, Dave, just just um, as a sort of another sort of bit of context and on reason why I was thinking of getting a NAS, um, and I'd really appreciate your input on this, is that because 
So Hannah's started to do a lot more commercial photography now. So when what we thought was that by buying a laptop, um, it would mean that I can still work on the main iMac and she can work on the laptop. Um, but we would be able to have our uh, probably our Lightroom catalogue running off an SSD plugged into whichever computer we're using, but we'd be able to access the stored files from either computer on the NAS. So would that be a better solution for that? Yes, it, it, it would. As a, as a file sharing solution, then absolutely a NAS drive is the, is the way to go. Um, yeah, I mean, that is a, an unusual use case, but it's definitely the best solution for you guys. Cool. Don't daisy chain your NAS. Um, use an SSD. Um, Stop it. To RAM. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Thanks opinion. for that neat summary. Yeah. That was that's the, the best well put. Yeah. Uh, personally, I mean that's a thumbnail right there. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't <laughs> change your nads. Yeah. Um, personally, the way I like to do things is is a little bit different. Uh, I like to use internal hard drives externally. Uh, I've got one here. <laughs> uh, I've got I've got another one here as well. I've also got these which I think are probably about 20 years old uh, and I don't have a, any way of using that one. And I've also got this one here that's got stuff on and I, I think it, I think I've got a lot of LimeWire downloads on that one. LimeWire? Right. Um, old school. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, Naz to me <clears throat> sounds like a guy I get fish and chips from. Um, so, um, I, I don't. Famous rapper. I'll Famous tell you rapper. what, my, my first external hard drive was purchased in 1988 for a, a Mac, Macintosh 2. It was 20 meg and it cost 800 quid. Jeez. And I had it about three months before I bollocksed it by forgetting to park the heads before I powered it down. Never park. I wrote never it off. Forget to park your heads. Exactly. It's very important. As much as daisy chaining is not a good idea leaving your heads in drive without parking them <laughs> dangerous very dangerous i hope that i hope that this is we're getting this across to you the the the, the cut and thrust of this i hope that you're yeah. you're feeling this and, and also um if anyone is having problems gary is our technical expert and he charges yes. i think it's like you know about five pound an hour so yeah perhaps put your mm. phone number up at the bottom of the screen you know they can just ring yeah. your gal you can anything. talk them through it anything anything uh, yeah first anything, second, anything third third support. related <clears throat> yeah. yeah yeah i mean if you've got a if you've got a jquery i'm your j man <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> Oh, what I'm talking about. Um, is there anything else you'd like to ask, Sam, on that, no. along those lines? I think bit, we've bit rates it. or uh, other stuff. What about the degradation of DAT tape? That's a problem. That's yeah. a constant worry for me. I'll be honest. <laughs> of what tape? DAT. DAT. DAT, DAT tape, Jamie. DAT, DAT tape. tape. As no, opposed to dis no, tape. Yeah, <laughs> not dis tape. DAT tape. <laughs> Uh, I've got yeah. some duct tape. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that's, if that's the same stuff. <laughs> du du duct tape, yeah. It's duct tape, isn't it? It's not yeah. duck. Not tape. duck. No, duct no. tape. No, okay, I'm just, just double checking. Yeah, Someone if you've abducted a duck, you yeah, use ask, duct tape. Yeah, <laughs> Tie its legs together, stop it getting away. Ask him for a friend. Um, okay, all right. Um, we good? Yeah, is everyone yeah. happy? Yeah, yeah we're we, good. Anymore? I'll tell you what, considering this is the season finale, we're killing it. Oh, we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No so one's going to mind at all that we're having a, a, a break now. They'll have, thank goodness for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're throwing that in. Okay, all right, let's talk about something photographic, you know, because we haven't really. Yeah. Um, now, drives aren't really photographic, are they? Jamie, this one's one of yours, and this has been kicking around for a while. I think it's actually mm. quite a good subject, to be honest with you. Um, do you want to? Do you want to ask the question? Or do you want to? You know, oh, I can do, because yeah. basically, I haven't written it down properly. <laughs> You've forgotten it, haven't you? Yeah. No, I put comp. You, you've learned really or natural. I don't think that really covers it. So. <laughs> I, I don't remember the, the exact wording of the topic, but it was something along the lines of: um, Can you naturally see a composition, or is it something you can learn by training and workshops and things like that? And if I remember rightly, it was a while ago that we put the, that I put this in. I think it was I was looking at 
and I know, you know guys that I'm a big fan of, of Stu's mates, Mark Littlejohn's work, and I was looking at the stuff that he no. posts on Twitter, uh, <laughs> and just his snaps on his phones alone, on his iPhone, compositionally, they're, they're spot on. And, you know, everything that he takes is considered. It's not just like generally walking around with your phone and snapping away and posting it. It's a considered composition that he posts. And it got me thinking, you know, does that, is that something that you learn through your years of going out and exploring and taking compositions, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, thinking of the technical side of the, you know, balance and rules of third and all that? Or is it something that is just natural to some people? that you can naturally see a composition that works and you take it. So it was that was the question, is it natural or is it something that you have to learn over years of experience before you can just literally point whatever you've got, phone, camera, at something and get it compositionally correct? That's the question. Well, I'd say surely it's a, it's a bit of both um, and it's something that can be learned, but I'm sure some people probably do it quicker than than others. I'm sure there's there's people we know who've started photography and within a very short time have, have picked it up really naturally. And for others, it takes longer. But it's the same with anything. I think some people some people take you know just a little bit longer to to learn things, but it can be learned. Um, and you know, I know in in my own experience um you know now i will go out like even you know a couple of weekends ago i, I went out and i took some photos in the field and i got home and looked at them and could immediately see oh that would be better if i'd done this or that would be better if i'd done that and then the next time i'm out in a similar situation hopefully it um that will then be in the back of my mind and and i'd probably do a little bit better at it so i think it's a constant evolution in our skills but we but we pick up and and some people might be quicker at picking that up than others and that's really the same same as anything really i'm going to say something controversial i don't think there's any mm. of it i don't think i don't think any of it is down to mm, no maybe i do i don't think any of it is necessarily down to natural talent i think it's all learned in one way or another the talent is how you interpret your learning because if, I think if you give someone a camera who has no access to the internet and has never seen a photo in their life and say, go and take a photo over there, I don't think they would go and take a photo that's well composed. I don't think they would. I think that part of it is going and experiencing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. But a big part of it is being influenced by what you see. So if you, like all of us, for instance, we're not islands. We all look at other people's work. And we're influenced by that work. And so whether you like it or not, you're learning from other people's work. So for instance, the rule of thirds. I don't think if you were just said, right, here's a camera, go and take a photo, you would put things on the rule of thirds. I think you would just just go and take a photo of what's in front of you. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's duct tape is uh, on the way. <laughs> Gary's hot take. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's what I think anyway. Like, because I'll give you an example. Um, woodland, for instance. I don't think anyone would walk into a woodland and and be able to just, there's a shot, bang. I can take it without looking at other people's woodland work and going and doing it more themselves. So I think it's it's just what you learn, the skill and the natural ability is how quick you pick things up, not whether you've got an eye for it, I think. Well, I, was, I, I, said, I, said, I said earlier that I was kind of going from my back catalogue to to, uh, to print this week, and I went right back to, I think, 2017, which was, my, I think, my first year, really, of, of, of shooting landscape, and I went to Iceland, and uh, I went to the Diamond Beach, and uh, <coughs> just looking at the photos, these icebergs that I had was absolutely incredible and you get that kind of I was there before sunrise and the light came up and they shone through and they was giving off kind of obviously started off the these icebergs were kind of like really orange with the sun burning into them and then it kind of then there were some blue tones and you know when you look at your photos and you're scrolling through 
and you think, oh, in a minute I'll come to one from a different angle and a better composition. And literally there was me just eye level, got down low, <laughs> photographing the same poxy bit of ice for about a hundred photos. And I'm looking at them last night thinking, oh, you had the conditions, you had the subject matter, move your bloody camera, you know? And I just think how I would have composed that now. It, it was mm. really frustrating. In fact, there was one photo that was really nice and I did actually print it, but all of the others, I think, but that was more luck than judgment. But I think, but, but looking at what I know now, I was really frustrated with myself for, for not kind of choosing a better angle with these beautiful icebergs. So I think, to echo what Sam said, I think there is a lot of natural ability, but I think it is something that you, you hone you know, kind of as you, as you progress, the, the more you go out, the better you become. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's where I was leaning to as well. I, I, although you'd like to think it's a natural ability and you're born with this natural skill of, of finding a composition in it work. And I don't think in reality it is, you've got, you've got to be able to experience things that don't work first to know what does work. Um, and I think it's also, probably something that you would experience and learn over the years is how to um how to know what does work and when to get that camera out and when not to get the camera out so what makes a good picture in terms of is it is it the light that you see or is it the colors is it the shapes or whatever that doesn't come naturally you've got to be able to learn to see that and understand that that is actually going to make a decent picture rather than just snapping something because you know it looks good to you but it might not work from a photographic perspective. I think a lot of what we do is just experiences over the years, things that we've seen and worked and, and we know that that therefore will, you know, that's the thing we need to look out for more than we maybe would have done in the past. So I think it is, personally speaking, I think it's something that you will learn, but I think other, some people have got a more natural talent to see compositions than others. How long did it take you, Stu, before, like, once you started shooting, before you kind of went professional, when you felt that you was at that standard, that you was now going to turn pro? About a week. Ooh. He's going to say about a week, isn't he? <laughs> a week. <laughs> hey, you saw my pictures. <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I picked it up relatively quickly, I would say, but uh i don't know if there was any one sort of turning point where i sort of you know got to a level where all of a sudden you're suddenly good enough to start doing stuff professionally or whatever but um i don't know i, I mean from what you guys are saying that i'd agree with with a lot of it I, I do think it is a combination of things um but to what gary was saying i, I normally gary i would have probably thought along the lines of what you were saying there Make but I've, uh, <laughs> also i have an example that, that completely um contradicts that i had i had a lady on a workshop um a couple of years ago and what you were saying there about influences and stuff this this lady um was really worried when she came on the workshop about the sort of technical aspects of um you know exposure triangle and using the camera and all that mm. sort of stuff and for the first half an hour of the workshop, she was absolutely, you know, just couldn't organize her thoughts, didn't really know what she was trying to achieve and all of that. And I said, look, I said, just put the thing on auto and just start taking pictures. Um, and this lady, to all intents and purposes, from what I could see, was pretty free from it, from any influence, really, in terms of like, she wasn't on social media, she didn't really take any interest in you know, other people's work and all of that. She was just very much sort of pretty much a, a beginner, just sort of getting into photography, pick the camera up, no real outside influences or anything like that. But she came from a creative background. She was a um, an interior designer. So she had a good grasp of uh, sort of color theory and mm. working with colors and organization and all that sort of thing. And then when I said to her, I said, just put the thing on auto and start taking pictures. Cause it's not obviously something you would normally say to someone, but in this instance, it was appropriate. And sure enough within, I'd say at least, but maybe not even 10 minutes, she was, she was starting to take pictures that 
really show the compositional eye. And I guess to what your point in saying that you, you know you, you you're taking other examples of people's work and stuff. This woman wasn't doing that at all. She was just very much a natural in terms of just seeing a composition and doing it. I would say that probably is a very small portion of photographers that I've seen it first and uh, some photographers, I mean, we're saying about Mark there, Mark's a good example of that in that Mark, from when he first picked up a camera and started doing dog walking was taking pictures at a very high standard because he could just see the composition. Mm. Um, but I'd say if you were talking in like percentage terms, I'd say it's probably like 95 to 5% of people where it's more of a learnt skill that you just, you know, you develop all the time. Uh, I'm definitely in the 95%. But, but, but sorry, I'm only laughing because of Gary. That's all. He's been going boop, boop, for the last. Oh, sorry, kind of like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't looking. <laughs> but she worked in interior design. So she worked in the design industry. And there will be a level of transferable skills between that and photography and art and all of the things. So she might not have looked at photos, but she might have looked at paintings. She might have looked at how things work in, in a room, which is transferable to, you know, you could, you could argue that yeah. putting a compositional element to a room is similar or has some bearing on putting a compositional element. Well, to if we, if we were, if we were talking just within the confines of photography, then I would say yeah. she's not been influenced. But yeah, I mean, no. totally get your point. If yeah. she, there's definitely yeah. other influences that yeah. could have, you know, yeah. influenced. But if you, if I, you, I if must you, admit, I, 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 Gary, I'm really sorry to say this, but I, I I'm more with, with me. more with Stuart than you. And and the reason is that, you know, I can also cite examples of people who take compositionally engaging photographs. Um, sure. They could be critiqued to some extent, but fundamentally they're approached with absolutely zero photographic knowledge, just using a phone because they see something they like and yeah. how they then frame that up. You look at it and think y you really should take up photography. And, and the example is the lovely Mrs. G because there have been times when she's come home after a dog walk with her phone and said, oh, I got this image. And the image is absolute pants in terms of technical quality, but compositionally it's absolutely spot on. And I've gone out with my pro gear and, and taken the same shot because a, a, an identical shot because she was spot on with zero training and with zero interest in it, in all honesty, but just kind of knowing that, you know, just putting things in the right place and yeah. moving backwards and forwards a bit and uh, but i'm also with stuart in that that is a small percentage of people and i think predominantly uh, i'd agree with stuart it's 95 to 5 in terms of people that need to learn but it's also fair to say and certainly a lot of the people i've worked with over the last sort of four or five years um for for most of them they can improve substantially by applying themselves and learning and and trying to soak up some influence um, but f for for every sort of 10 people eight of them can do that and make progress there's still another two or so that mm. five years later still you, you yeah. look at it and think you've learned nothing but but we live in a world we live in a world well we, we do live in a world I agree yes we live in a world <laughs> that sounded like I was talking to myself then I wasn't we yeah you were a, none of us are listening to you we, we live in a world <laughs> in your where world. we've got no what I'm trying to say is we live in a world where we've got like creative influences everywhere all around us you look at the television there are creative influences on there you look at a magazine there's a creative influence look at a billboard and there are some people who have an interest in who are creative because they're interested in the creative arts so even though they don't realize they're learning, they're learning because they have shown interest. They go, that looks really nice. Oh, that looks really nice. There are people, it, what I'm trying to say is, I agree with you, but I agree with you. There is, There are people out there who will pick up a camera if they've never picked up a camera before and instantly take good, reasonably composed images. But that's not because they are naturally predisposed to taking good images. It's because they, 
take in everything that's around them. They have a creative mind and they see everywhere these influences and that trans that transfers to when they pick up a camera. If you put a kit, okay. Not, not right, all. Okay, let me, let Most, me ask Most, but this. not all. Let me ask you this, right? If you put someone and, and you, and from birth, you grow them, you grow them, you, grow you them. them. You, <laughs> the greenhouse. You, 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 know, you, you put them in a darkened room, right? With no influence to the outside world, yeah? They don't, they don't see television, they don't see any, any kind of media, they don't talk to anyone else, they don't think, and then you let them out at, say, 15 and give them a camera and say, right, well, take a photo. Right? Initially, they'll go, what's a camera? I, I get that, but... <laughs> I don't Where think, is this going? But what I'm saying is, is we this, are this in, started off a really nice question from Jay, and you yeah. turned into something like a Mad Max. No. It's <laughs> like we we drifted into Helen Keller's yeah. life story. What I'm trying to say is, we we, we are influ we're influenced, we're influenced from everything that surrounds us, and some people who are more creatively inclined pick up those influences yeah. and then subconsciously use them when they go to take a photo and some people who are not creatively inclined won't take notice of any of the things that are around us and will pick up a camera and not know what to do and then equally how how much you improve is about how well you learn not how well you see things you learn to see things that's 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 how i see it i was always a creative kid when i was a kid I always had a pencil in my hand. I was always drawing. I was always, I always wanted to be an artist, not wanted to be an artist, but it was always artistic. I used to draw lots of things and that transferred into a camera when I got older. And what, my father-in-law goes, oh yeah, but you've just got a natural eye for it. And I'm like, no, I don't have a natural eye for it. I've just picked that up. It's just, I've picked that up over years and years and years of being interested in drawing something or photographing something. I don't think there is an innate natural ability in anyone. It's just how well you take in those influences that are all around you. And now I'm going to stop. Well, I'm, I'm going to go back to saying what, what almost echo what Dave said. It's <clears throat> Helen's got a very natural ability. <clears throat> Steve, her, her brother, is a tattoo artist, amazing drawer. Uh, her cousin, Ian, fantastic drawer so is Helen she you know uh, her paintings are, are really good her cakes are really good and I give her a camera I bought her a camera will you stop put them all in a darkened room you put them all in a darkened room for 15 years it's and ask like, him to draw a tattoo then he won't be able to do it puff of fish in the corner there put him um, in a darkened room but, but I give her. Helen the camera <laughs> and I tell you what, she is so good, but she's got no interest. And I bought her, I, I bought her all the gear and I said, oh, come with me. And she was there taking photos um, of a little bit of kind of training, a, a few workshops. She would be really good, but she's got no interest in it. But she has got a good compositional eye. Only because she wasn't brought up in a darkened room for 15 well, years. That's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. Just saying. That's going to be one of my next experiments. One of the grandkids, I'm just going to bring him up in a darkened room for 15 years and say, right, off you go, take a photo. All right, Mr. Fritzl. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention it earlier. But so, I also think yeah, it's interesting because there was a couple of things that Jamie said that I didn't pick up on at the time because the conversation moved on. But you talk about, uh, you, you mentioned things like uh, what's correct and what works and what doesn't work and when you align that with what Darren said about taking pictures of icebergs mm. I think it's important not to try and over engineer how scientific we ought to be with this sort of thing because Darren I'm willing to bet that at the point where you came back from that first trip to Iceland you were absolutely buzzing and you loved your images absolutely. it's only with hindsight mm. and time yeah. passing and I think it's it's too easy for people to become demoralized by um, or I, I'm told that I need to improve. You know, I, what I would always say to people is just enjoy where you're at at the moment. If you go out this weekend, you take a picture that you love. That's terrific. The likelihood is in three years time, you'll feel less positively towards it. But don't let that undermine how you feel about it now. You know, don't don't stop enjoying your your pastime because you feel you've got this constant need to strive to improve um yeah that that's what i would say and yeah. with that i very much agree 
No, I agree yep. as well. And yep. I think that, that whole argument around photography being too technical and being too, you know, it's all around the rules, which we've all said so many times, you know, they're just there as a guide and it's down to inter you know, an interpretation of how we want to adopt the, or not those rules. And I think that's the whole message with this, isn't it? That composition is, there isn't a set composition, there isn't a rule that we will have to abide by. It's what makes that picture work for us mm. and if it if 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 it works for us and it comes across and it means something to us when we take in it then that's it you know that's, i mean that's one one thing i think achieve. one thing i think is really important is to separate subject and composition we talk about composition quite glibly but i think that a lot of images don't work very well because they haven't worked out what the subject is mm -hmm. you can't compose something until you've got a mm. subject oh, and the subject might just be a, a contrasting block of color or or it might be something specific but without that you can't compose it and i think that it'll help people to divorce those two and say right first of all I'm shooting this, this has caught my attention. What's What about it has caught my attention? Get that right first and the composition then actually is the easy bit. Mm. It's all about the why. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what people say, don't they? They say it's all about the why. Why am I taking this shot? It's all about the why. Sorry. But I haven't... But having said all that, compositional learning through workshops is definitely to be promoted, isn't that right? <laughs> definitely. Dave, others. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. I, I'm fully booked. Uh, I'm not punting anymore. <laughs> I, I, think the th I think the thing is, when you mention workshops and, and things like that, it's always good. Even if you're not going on a workshop, it's always good to go out with someone else because mm. they will give you uh, uh, an interpretation of the scene that you don't have yourself. Exactly. No, Someone I mean, asked yes. me why I why I went out on a workshop with Stuart, and and they were really they they wrote in and said, bloody hell, what you know why why are you going on a workshop? And it was well, you you can't fail to learn something mm -hmm. and have an enjoyable time, of course. But it's <laughs> it's ludicrous to say that. Oh well, because you run workshops yourself, that you won't benefit from going on a workshop with somebody else and stealing all their ideas. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> We're just spending time with other photographers as well. Ex no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. just a really, really enjoyable thing to do. And to be honest, I would say to anybody, if you're in the lakes or you're in the fens um, or you're in Scotland, you know, there are good people out there who will make sure you have a really enjoyable time and hopefully take yeah. away some useful information or, or in two years time if you're in the photon uh, <laughs> podcast podcast tours rs <laughs> you're still punting that pipe dream yeah one day one day i won't be able to come but you guys can make a <laughs> make a killing from it all anyway moving on um <laughs> you need a break though don't you i need i need a i need a uh, i need someone to put me down i think um Anyway, moving on, we've had a, com uh, a comment from, uh, from Chris Toombs. Uh, he says, really enjoying the podcast, guys. Thanks for taking the time out to entertain us. Okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, my question to help line up the funny stories is what personal trait has gotten you in the most trouble? How, why and when? I think we should start with Sam. Me? I'm going in with Sam. Yeah. OK. Oh, I don't know. Um... Probably my plum English accent. Um, definitely in terms of YouTube videos, I, I, I had that video I was talking about moving up to Scotland and I mentioned, oh, I, I grew up in the Highlands, uh, which I did. And the number of comments I've had from just random trolls saying that twat hasn't grown up in the Highlands, he doesn't have a trace. He's, he's, or if he did grow up in the Highlands, he went off to public school in Oxford for however many years and I didn't. Um, Cambridge. Did you go to Hogwarts? <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked. I worked at Oxford Uni for four years, but I've not. I've not. I didn't study there. But um, yeah, no, that's probably the. I don't know. That's probably the, the main personality trait. If I'm being polite, I would say to them every time you get one of those, I say, "Have you not watched Monarch of the Glen?" Yeah. <laughs> they're all English on that, or sound like they're English. What's the matter with you? Yeah. What's Monarch of the Glen when it's at home? 
Oh, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a traditional history of Scotland yeah, fairly series. Scottish, very fairly t- Scottish. Tells you what it's like to live yeah. in Scotland. Yeah. Oh, Basically, all of the people, that. all of the people who were sort of aristocracy were English, and all of the people who were like, you know, the uh, sort of servants and the people who did, they were all Scottish. It's accurate. Well, that's that's what it was like for me growing up in the Highlands, Monica yeah. for Glen. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Very historically accurate. Kind of like Brookside. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Thank you very much for that, Daz. Go on, Daz. You must have some traits that get you into trouble. Perhaps not so much now, because I have mellowed. I really have mellowed a lot, you know. But in my twenties, I was just just an arsehole, really. I was just, you know, just my mouth just run away with me. I, I'm not saying I didn't care a lot about offending people, but if I thought I had an opinion, then I would just say it, you know. And it's only like looking back now, and I think oh, I could have handled that a little bit differently. I could have, you know, kind of just bit my tongue for a second, but you know I, I kind of don't suffer fools gladly um so if i think someone's being an idiot i would tell them that they're being an idiot you know uh, and and so but you know it's not always the best way to do that you know sometimes you just kind of got to hold back a little bit wait for the storm to pass you know and uh and just go on your merry way but yeah i, I was very opinionated and i was i was too quick um i, I think to not say judge other people, but I was t- I was too quick to tell other people, you know, what I th- what I thought of them, which is not the best way. My dad always used to say he used to say, it, the important thing is not when to speak, it's when to not speak. Yeah. But then he left me when I was four and left me with my lunatic mother. So you know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> who's next? Oh, Anyone? Feel free. Someone. Just yeah, go for it. Dave. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Um, I've got to be honest, mine is almost identical to Darren's with the exception of mellowing. Um, so Dave, you haven't changed, mate. You've not changed in 60 no, years. Quite. So you can't use that one. No, but uh, that is that is my <laughs> failing. I once gained a nickname, which at the time I was secretly chuffed about. I worked in a business in the early 90s, between 90 and 94. And I managed a team of, at one point, about 50 or 60 people. And I had this really set in stone position as to how I ran things, where I was either your best friend or your worst enemy. There was no middle ground, there was no nuance. Um, And for the people for whom I was their worst enemy, they usually got shown the door very quickly. And I got this nickname of Chopper Griffiths. (laughs) <laughs> and somebody somebody that told me about it in, in yeah there was that as well <laughs> you know far be it from me but somebody said to me uh, all right chopper what are you drinking i was like what and they told me where it came from and i thought yeah all right um and uh, as i say unlike you darren i'm not sure that i've mellowed that much because i don't suffer fools gladly i think that also I've reached an age where I'm less concerned about what people think of me and I'm happy to share what I think of them. You know, I'm, I'm at the stage now where if I have a crappy meal in a restaurant and, and somebody comes up and says, how's the meal? Um, I'll bloody tell them if it's rubbish. <laughs> you sound like just, you enjoy sorry, that as just, well. <laughs> I don't know if you want to bring this bit in or not, Gal, but... Where we're, where we're, I'm going off on a tangent, but where we're working, me and Helen, we're right next door to an Indian restaurant. And I had to go into their basement the other day. Uh, anyway, we had to, I, I went and spoke to the manager and I said, oh, Tuesday morning, I need to get into your basement, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, he, he came, I had a chat with him, so he said, okay. And as he walked away, I turned my back, but as he walked away, you know, and then Helen said, we're never eating in that restaurant. I said, why? She oh, really? Went, did you just see he blew his nose into his hand and then just flicked it on the wall <laughs> so she said we are never going to that restaurant ever Jesus Christ. Oh, oh. <laughs> jamie what about you 
What's your worst trait? <laughs> I've got loads, but I, I read the question in terms of what's the personal trait that would get me in trouble and things that might yeah. get me in trouble here. Um, and I'm, we, me and Daz were talking actually before we, we started to, uh, to record around how, how untidy we are and how things that we don't want to get rid of just stay where either they're left or where you want to keep them. And I'm, I'm a bit like that. I'm a bit of a Mr. Trebus. You know, the guy that just has a house yeah, full yeah, of junk. Yeah. Um, and I just hate getting rid of stuff. I hate, you know, if something could be of use or I could make it of use, I just don't want to get rid of it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I get into trouble all the time with not having the, the, not being able to chuck stuff away. Even the box that this new screen came in that I got this week, I wanted to keep it because I thought ah, that's going to come in use, or if I, if I sell it again, I'll For get more what? money with the box. Oh, well, it's just yeah, a nice box. I do you know what I mean? I don't like yeah. throwing boxes away, but I had to. Uh, has has gone in the recycling. But even like Dave's, Dave's recycled or upcycled the box that the Virgin Wine box thing came in, and I wanted to do the same thing. But you know, <laughs> Dave's proved me right that you can make good use out of that type of thing. Um, I hate throwing things away. I really I'm do. exactly the same, Jamie. And boxes as well for monitors. They're really useful if you ever have to move house. Exactly. But yeah. I, I, I've kept <laughs> all the boxes for pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I've that... now got an attic, so I can stick. See, them in. I'm <laughs> the opposite. I, 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 I'm not keen on recycling, but I love bonfires. <laughs> So, like, I'll empty the recycling box and burn the lot when Jan isn't looking. <laughs> yeah, you can probably get away with that where you are. Yeah. I'd have all the neighbours just... around here causing a bit of a it's... stink if I had a fire in the back garden. Well, when when you come and camp, we, we'll we'll have a campfire and sit around it and toast some marshmallows. I'll bring all the boxes bollocks. from the loft then. Oh, yeah, yeah, bring them. <laughs> it's one of the things I'm notoriously bad at, actually, is is admin stuff. Um, and fortunately, Hannah tends to look after everything for me and I'm useless at it. But, but all that kind of official paperwork and stuff, I just hoard, but I'll file it away in a carrier bag somewhere. So I'll have like two years worth of bank statements and HMRC mm. bits and stuff, which I'm going to stick in a folder one day. And it just mm. gets accumulated into, into carrier bags. And yeah, <laughs> awful with it. So maybe I should combine that with your love of bonfires, Dave. Yeah, bring it down. We'll yeah. sort it out for you. It's Christ, they're going to be on the news. Angle sees on fire. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Stuart? What's your what's your worst trait or trait that gets you into trouble? Christ, um, I would say years ago, probably a mix of what Darren and Dave were saying. I had a terrible short fuse. Just zero. I, I still now have like zero tolerance for idiots and stuff like that but uh, I've you know mellowed with age like a lot of people what are you doing do. you're still here <laughs> I'm still here what are you um, doing running a gallery I know <laughs> that, yeah um, but things like that running a gallery and, and all you know kids and stuff like that mellow you and you, you know you get a level of perspective and you you know you you calm down a little bit so I'm, I'm, I'm a lot better than I used to be definitely uh, but yeah years ago Christ I, I could go from not to 100 very quickly uh, yeah. if you piss me off the wrong way but Same. um but now the, the i mean the thing that more sort of mundane thing that gets me into trouble a lot is that i've got a classic male trait of if it's not something that interests me i just zone out so she can be talking to me about something and if it's it, i immediately sort of have that filter of this is of no interest to me and I just, <laughs> and I, and I just it's terrible isn't it? and we all have it don't we but and, and she'll be taught and it's not that it, it's probably something very interesting but you know, I'll just zone out and then two minutes later I'll be like you won't listen <laughs> yeah you won't listen and it's held over your head you know it's, I'll yeah. tell you what but, there was something on YouTube or it was like TikTok or something but I must have saw it on YouTube and I couldn't find it, and I, and I was searching for it to show Helen. And it was this lady, and she was explaining the difference between, say, male and female, the way they tell a story. Like, the, 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 the average male yeah. will try and get from the start to the point end a, as quickly as possible, because yeah. they just want yeah. to get to the point. Whereas yeah. a female normally kind of tells, like, the, the journey of how oh, they got yeah. to that story. God. And that's exactly the same, because I, I know, lots, as I say, because, you know, I have mellowed, but I've still got that kind of little abrupt. 
and sometimes elves will be talking and i'll just say what is the point what what are you, what are you point, saying yeah. <laughs> i'm getting to it and i'm just thinking well yeah. you know get to but it is a, it is a male and female trait it really is and, and yeah. after watching this i thought and i was desperate to show her but i couldn't find it again <laughs> but well, those amongst us who are parents might relate to this where you've you've refined this trait to absolute perfection of being able to psychologically dial down the white noise of your missus telling a <laughs> yeah. tortuously long and pointless story the minute you have kids and they're in the back seat of the car and they won't shut up try as you might you cannot filter it out yeah. I, I remember being in the car with my daughter and i was thinking i'm losing it i've lost my ability to zone out <laughs> everything she says it's like just shut the up <laughs> and i couldn't do it and, and to this day i can't if if holly's talking i i, I can't i can't zone yeah. her out if, if beth's watching i disagree with everything they've just said <laughs> <laughs> i never so i never ever zone out ever ever zone out uh oh it's just down to me is it okay um does anyone want to take a guess at what my trait is because you know let's make it a bit fun you're a little bit opinionated mm. slightly else? outspoken mm. quite noisy in your sleep i am definitely noisy in my sleep how do you know okay <laughs> <laughs> i remember now not Don't go there. uh anyone else no uh, i'm gonna tell you my trait is i'm too nice <laughs> it, trust me i'm too nice you won't believe it but i am no we don't. too nice <clears throat> I'll give you an example, right? If you watch my latest video, right? Not a plug for my latest video, but I took a shot on Brick Lane, and just before I start describing it, you can, you can. Uh, who was that? That's me. I can't, I can't work out how to put my new phone on silent. Shut up. So That's, many piece of shit. Yeah. So <laughs> if you look when I'm taking a photo on Brick Lane, you can see in the GoPro there's this this guy stood right here in the shop right and i didn't make any i didn't mention anything of it but i filmed the whole thing because i got my gopro on I saw that. as i finished the shot he was like are you all right sir and i was like yeah i'm all right he said listen you know um i i'm homeless and i don't have any money and you know i, I really i said I, i'm really sorry mate i haven't got any money with me i've only got cards you know so i can't give you any. he said that's okay there's a shop just over there can we go and get something and i was like <laughs> i was thinking right oh, white lightning or something and i was like okay you know i'll come and get you a drink or whatever right because i'm I, i'm very like that went to the shop he bought two lemons a lime some cauliflower uh, a couple of packets of crisps some sweets some chocolate like and i'm like oh this guy really genuinely he's not an alcoholic he's genuinely homeless he's a, and i'll give it to him all and i'm like he's like oh can i get this on? whoa you know <laughs> I, I don't work myself you know 100 to 400 yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, yeah he wasn't the chef in the local restaurant <laughs> <laughs> Could have been, a couple of limes and lemon i'm on a cauliflower <laughs> we need some coriander some curry powder <laughs> I, I walked away afterwards he's like oh, thanks very much i'm like no worries i walked away afterwards i thought i'm just do you know i'm just i'm too nice i'm too much of a soft like i'm too much of an easy easy thing i used to, my my missus because obviously the last time we went on holiday which was a few years ago she was in a wheel she's in a wheelchair when we go walk any long distances so we were walking down the front in uh, Playa Blanca in Lanzarote and you know you get all the people coming out going would you like to come into my restaurant you know right and normally she, if she was walking she'd be like no 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 I'm like oh okay let's have a look I've got no intention to go you went on a restaurant crawl <laughs> yeah I'm like oh like, For fuck's sake, you're pushing me so I've got to sit here and listen to this guy now explaining stuff so I push it on to the next one and this guy would go would you like to come she's like no and i'm like oh come on let's have a look at what you like, i bet it was like the vicar of dibley with the brush with, with the uh, christmas dinner episode yeah. gary yeah. went into yeah. every restaurant <laughs> along the street I, I really don't like i don't like saying no to people i don't like saying i'm not interested i find it really difficult so someone comes like we when i was younger i had a jehovah's witness come to the door 
and they, they, they like they literally came back every day for about four weeks because I just didn't know how to say like please go away and leave me alone so instead of instead of doing that I'll try and give them a question they couldn't answer so I'd be like well if, if you know if, if God exists then why can't you know blah 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 and they go oh I don't know that now but I'll come back and let you know and the next day they come back and go, well I've got an answer for you and I think, oh. in the end I just used to sit in my flat and not answer the door because I was too scared to go I'm not interested anymore <laughs> so it's it's being nice that's my that's you, my trait I, I'll tell you what I'm gonna I'm gonna back you up actually because you are you are very nice yeah you are it's like I've wanted to get rid of the And I think that's thing. what sometimes your problems are with your, with, you know, with your frustrations because yeah. you, you, it, it takes a little while, then things kind of manifest and then you kind of, kind of blow up actually. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's like I am, I am outspoken and I am a, I am a, you know, a bit of a gobshite, but I am, I do, I am quite nice and sometimes people Deep take down. Mickey and take the piss out of that and then I get wound up and then I sound like I'm being moany yeah. but I'm, for those I'm, of us who know you yeah you, you yeah. are one of life's good guys I'm, I'm all yeah. right really I'm yeah. all right yeah. I'm not that bad <laughs> want to see let's move on to something else this is the last one we'll you know last one of the of the season we can have a we're gonna have a good old rant here all right Daz you put this one in pet hates pet hates now this was kind of inspired by Steve Marsden um, when he was talking about things that he didn't like in terms of YouTube, so things that really wound him up with YouTube. But Daz then said, well, why don't we just open it up to everything? Just things that annoy us. So Daz, you can go first, mate. What, what well, the, really the, annoys you? Do you know, well, there's two things, but they're actually, they're actually identical, really. So one of my like real pet hates right so when people come around especially it's like it's more like our kids or Helen's side of the family and after like two or three hours I say right okay we're off now now my side of the family whether it's a phone call or visiting when someone says they're off they just go so picture this it's the middle of winter and they say after like two or three hours right we're off now okay okay then go to the front door they step outside the front door with the door wide open and then they stand on the doorstep and carry on talking for five yeah. or ten minutes yeah. and yeah. there's me like thinking going back to there's me thinking right i've got to suck this up now where there's freezing cold air coming in or i've got to be the arsehole so will you lot just f off do you know what i mean either come in or come back and in. carry yeah. on talking or go <laughs> because when when i say i'm going i go sometimes i might wave behind me head but i'm i'm off you know what i'm like when I, yeah. when we're together I'm, I'm i'm gone and it's the same thing like say Elle's when she's on the phone to her mum and she's like right okay then mum yeah i'm gonna go now all right then yeah. all, right, all right then mum yeah all right then all right then mum yeah okay okay mum okay mum and now i'm having this internal battle with myself thinking put the phone down put the phone. all right then mum no all right then mum okay mum okay okay mum and i'm thinking if you're gonna go go if you're not gonna go stay so yeah. they're my pet hates when someone says they're gonna go and they don't go they linger the worst one is when, when they go all right then yeah i'm gonna yep yeah, okay yep yeah. Did he? <laughs> oh, like Twenty minutes later. All right then. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, I forgot to. Oh, please. Yeah. Please stay. Yeah. So if you're gonna stay, stay. If you're gonna go, go. Yeah. That's my pet eight. Fair enough. I remember that for later. Yeah. Any anyone else got any pet hates? I mean, I'm sure we all have. Timekeeping for me oh like, yes was gonna, that was going to be mine as well oh yeah. god yeah. I, I, yeah. I actually with age i shouldn't but i, I actually really quite take it quite personally actually yeah uh, it's just i don't know what it, it it feels like a real sort of disrespect i think especially if it's people that you know as well i i, I cannot stand people being late that's a that's a it, big it, one for me it's when they say when they're late and they say well you knew i was going to be late I'm always yeah. late. 
Oh, well, Always late. Excuse, is it? It's not an excuse. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I hate, I, I hate that one. Well, I, I don't think there's any excuse for it. Sorry, J sorry, Shu, was you about to say something? No, 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 go on. No, I, I, I'll give you an example f for that. Sorry, I know I'm on a rant now. I'm, I'm really going for it. But <laughs> I, I'll never forget, I had this meeting booked at, like, say, 10 o'clock in the morning. I had to meet somebody um, at, a, at a college in Cambridge. And it got to about 25 past nine. And I just thought, oh... I need to go to the builder's merchants and I thought oh, I, I'm, if, I, if I go to the merchants I might just be there but I might be there two or three minutes late so I thought no I won't go because I hate lateness so I got to this college for half past nine I'm waiting in the car park until 10 o'clock for this guy to arrive and then at two minutes past 10 he rings me and says oh just let you know I'm running late and I said, well, why didn't you, but you must have known you was yeah. running late half an hour ago. I could have, so I've wasted my time because I didn't want to be late yeah. for him. And he didn't have the decency, but I could tell you a million stories like that. I suppose we all could, but yeah, I'm with you all the way there, Stu. I play cricket and there's, a, there's two or three <laughs> guys I play cricket with and they're always late. They are literally always late. So you say, get there for quarter past one or one o'clock and at about... 20 past one you phone them up and you say look where are you the game starts in 10 minutes so, oh yeah we're just 10 minutes away and you're like you're not 10 minutes away are you <laughs> you're not you know you're not 10 minutes away you're about 30 minutes away no no we're just 10 minutes away and then you phone them up 10 minutes later where are you oh yeah we're just 10 minutes away we're 10 minutes away every time I can't stand yeah i agree can't stand lateness really annoys me mm. can i go next because i've got another one that really annoys me mm. right you ready for this and this really annoys me is when you get someone who's really rude right or or any anything that you find annoying or obnoxious and you go oh my god and someone goes but that's just the way they are that's just the way they are <laughs> like you know don't don't mind her that's just the way she is like we, i used to work with this i used to work with this woman and she was being rude right or i mean when i got to know her she was actually all right but when you don't know her, That's like when, the female version of you. Yeah, you. When, yeah, when you don't know her, she's really rude, and you go, "Why is she so rude?" And someone else goes, "Oh, well, that's the way she is." What? Well, well, I'm sorry. Why did Hitler murder so many people? That's just the way he is. It's just of course, that, that went dark pretty quick. No, didn't but it? you know what I mean. Though. Why, why Extreme example. Did, yeah. did she work for the council? Yeah. Well, this I don't think you compare a council it? worker to Hitler. No, different woman. Yeah. <laughs> You can. No, but you know what I'm saying? It's the, the, just the way... When someone says that's just the way they are, that's not an excuse. Like, oh, they're always late. Well, well, yeah, well that's it. People do it with late, don't they? They, they, they go on yeah, the oh, whole... They're, they're always just, late. They're though. always late. And yeah, that's yeah. what gets me. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, that's all right. Oh, I yeah, must admit, I, I totally agree about time, especially when you haven't got much of it left. <laughs> and I, I, I was I was literally 90 seconds late for an appointment on Monday this week. And I was absolutely horrified. Yeah. And I went in and I said, I'm so sorry. I, I was yeah, because it was only 10 minutes from the house, but I got stuck behind a tractor and I've got no phone signal. So I can't even phone in and say, look, I'm going to be 90 seconds late. But normally. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll always, always, always arrange to be at a venue with 10 minutes to spare at the absolute yeah. minimum. And yeah, that yeah. is cutting Perfect. it fine. Mm -hmm. And I'll sit in their car park or whatever. And I, 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 you know, talk about obsessive. I went to see a lady a week ago, Tuesday, and it was booked for two o'clock in the afternoon. And I stood outside her front door at 10 seconds to two and counted it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Do, 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 do. I've done that. But, but I just, you know, I, I, I'm, with, I'm absolutely with you boys. It's just a matter of respecting the most valuable commodity anybody yep. has. Um, the things that annoy me about others, um, I, I seem to recall from the question, one of the suggestions was the Ken Burns effect on stills uh, in videos. And I have to admit, I'm, I'm entirely on side when it comes to that. I, imagine a scenario where you go to a gallery exhibition of the greatest photographer, you, the one you admire, you pitch up. And imagine all these bloody images zooming in and out on the wall. You, you'd think, <laughs> what an ass! 
Yeah, an image is an image. It, it, it's not something you reveal by degrees. So I, I, I totally am on board with that one. I've never used the effect, never will. But one thing that, and I, I've mentioned this before, I think it's gone out on a previous podcast, but it's something that continues to piss me off to the max, is imbecile vloggers talking about their adventures. <laughs> because <laughs> if you go out with a camera and point it at a sunrise, that's not an adventure. Trust me, that is not an adventure. It's you out with a camera. And if you try and big it up with such a stupid adjective, or, oh, it's a it, noun, isn't it? What a muppet, I got it wrong, it's a noun. It's anyway. part of the journey, Dave, it's part of the journey. Um, yeah, but, it, but it is, well. Dave, if you've been born in darkness for 15 years. <laughs> <you've> been, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. True. You don't know any better. It's true, yeah. And you go to the one stop, that is an adventure. <laughs> Talking along the same lines as you go, Dave, yeah, right? When you say, like, when people go, it's an adventure. You've opened a can of worms here, Dave. The, the, the thing that really, really winds me up when you come to, uh, when it comes to videos is when you get this, like, oh, like this all choral music, like it's going to be the biggest thing ever. And then it's like the worst photo. Or like, oh, 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 then the captions come up, Grimsby. (laughs) (laughs) Gary, you have to sell that clip and put it on Epidemic Sound. I choose it. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? It's like this epic music, like all black and white and building it up. And it's like, today I'm in Grimsby. (laughs) <laughs> do, do we know anybody that might have succumbed to that sort of thing? Well, a couple of people. Yeah? One in I particular. Have. I'm not going to mention his name again. Can I give a music example? <laughs> what you're b- building on what Gary's saying there. It's more of a recent trend, but one that really pisses me off is that, I mean, landscape photography, you know, that you see these videos where people are, because of the um, Stranger Things was on a while ago, people oh, putting... Yeah. 80s synth music into landscape photography videos i'm like can you pick two more inappropriate things to go together and i'm like what is 80s synth music doing in a landscape photography video i watched the guy the other day put rock in he put rock in it was like it was like he was walking along this like embankment with this like beautiful like babbling brook and it was going <laughs> 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 what's going to happen in a minute what's going on inappropriate I mean, music yeah. no one no one loves a bit of 80s synth more than me to be honest but but i'm with you on that but i tell you one, one thing that really winds me up and it might just be an age thing but it's high-pitched squeaky voices you know and they stick them through that pitch shifter thing and you get the sort of <laughs> kind of noises going on <laughs> with some kind of pulsing bass line oh it winds me up and that's it, there's so many youtube videos i think it might be a millennial thing I, I what landscape I am a photography thing. yeah well, all really? sorts of things yeah wow. I think any, anyone under the age of 25 just seems to love putting these squeaky voices I and mean, then occasionally you get people over the age where it's that, should they should know better wrong. and they they put these horrible squeaky soundtracks on them. equally though there's there is some way you get like it's like sort of i'm try, trying to think let me let me let me visualize one so someone's wandering along uh, like walking down a lovely country path and the song's going and i loved him and then he went <laughs> and he left me and there's nothing else for me to live for <laughs> <laughs> what, what the <laughs> what is, where does this music come from? It's like, it's like it's on epidemic sound for a reason because it's rubbish. Shit, yeah. don't, don't put the but, vocal. No, on I it. think you're right though. People put a bit of music on because they like the tune, but they give no thought to the lyrics no, that, no. that are conflict. Yeah. But I, I mean, you know, let's be fair. We couldn't have come up with a better topic to finish the season on, could we? Stuff that pisses no. us off. Because we could go on all night. Yeah, Jamie, you've been quiet. Surely, yeah. people with five fingers. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm That's jealous. So of them. annoying. Yeah. Cheeky girls hate us. <laughs> um, okay, what what winds me up? Narcissists, people that are just not genuine in any way, shape, or form. They wind me up. People that 
I talk to and I want to have a conversation with them about what's going on in my life, what's going on in my world, how things are affecting me, and they just don't listen. All they're interested in is what's going on in their world. And they don't want what to about you, Sam? Is there anything that you like? Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, really, that's really nice, yeah, exactly. Jamie. To be There's honest, I point. Want... <laughs> exactly, you see? I'm so anyway, going back to Maz Drives. <laughs> But it Sorry, does. It, no, no, but it does. It's like it happens, and it, and it really. And you know, I'm not going to cite examples of it, but I have got examples where I've I've been in situations where you've been trying to have a good conversation over a beer or some or something with with friends, and all they want to do is talk about themselves, and it's like, what? just just don't. You know, if you're going to talk to me. Just engage. This is a two-way conversation here. You know, we're we're talking about things that we're both equally interested in, not what you're going on in your world, and, and not interested in my world. And that that really really winds me up when people are just so self-centered. So so I tell you what, talking specifically because we've obviously Stuart, you've got specific vlogging annoyance, and Dave, you've done one, but. Let's talk about specific vlogging annoyances, because you you three guys must have things, you know, Daz, Sam, Jamie. What annoys you when you're watching a video? If it's like it doesn't it doesn't have to be like you know aimed at a specific person, although it can be if you want to. But you know, there must be something that annoys you when you're watching videos. Can I start with this one? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you've already done one. But you're <laughs> You get these Muppets that walk in slow motion all the time. <laughs> I'll just leave that there. Zoom in and out. The Ken Burns well, effect. I'm, I'm going to sort of have, have full disclosure here because A, I use the Ken Burns effect. <laughs> B, I walk in slow motion. And C, I also had a video with epic music in it not so long ago as well. So I probably just uh, what, need to leave. Why are your photos epic though? The photos weren't, but I was clambering over the pinnacles of Leoguk at the time. So, so Sam fine. was epic. Epic's yeah. fine. Epic's fine if you're being epic. Just don't. I'm always don't epic. Be, for Sam Sam always epic. Being so, epic. So, <laughs> slow always motion epic. is is you know it's. It, I can't film in normal motion anymore. I've lost the ability to film in normal motion. <laughs> It's like I put things in, like the other day, do you know, the other day I filmed some stuff in London and I was like, right, I'm going to film this, like this whole montage here at 24 frames a second and I couldn't. I had to slow it down. <laughs> I had to slow it down to 40%. I was like, it just doesn't work for me. It's not working for me. If I can't see a bus in slow motion, what's the point of a bus? <laughs> So, you, so with your slow motion fetish, is it like a like you're living in the Matrix, like everything's moving, you know, <laughs> slower yeah. for you? Yeah. That, that's yeah. your normal it, speed. If I could get away with it, if I could, it's, called, it's called bullet time. <laughs> if I could get away with it, I would film myself in slow motion talking. <laughs> a longer video, for a start. <laughs> You know, I, can't, I can't see the pro I, I can't see the problem with slow motion. To be fair, I, like I, I think one of those Matrix style bullet bullet thing where yeah. you have all the cameras around yeah. that'd be brilliant when you're taking yeah. a shot. Imagine a vlog where you yeah. could just do that. <laughs> you could like freeze it yeah. half halfway towards the shutter and then just be like zip round and then it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Grimsby. Yeah. No, I, I I I like slow motion, what can I say? I don't, tell you what I don't like. I don't like it. I I asked you three, and now we're just overruling you all. But um, <laughs> I don't like it when they go. I was just on a workshop the other day, and I thought about this, and you're like, oh, subtle lad, subtle lad. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys dislike about workshop? Uh, not workshop. Oh, um, <laughs> slip. But Sorry. talking of just, when people say I'm putting a CPL on, just to take the glare off. Oh, what Jesus. the hell else does it do? <laughs> No, I think what the one thing that annoys me with videos, and I, I, I kind of, I'll say it annoys me. It does, but I understand why I do. Is that if I almost Google something, but on YouTube to learn something or get an opinion about something, and the first kind of like two or three minutes is almost like an intro, and you know, and if you do get anything out of this video, please like give me a like, and, and I just think, 
just get to the point of why I clicked on this video and then I will make a decision whether I give you a thumbs up or leave a comment or something. But it's that really slow intro before they get to the point of why I clicked on that video. That, been, uh, that been, annoys me. I've been watching one guy recently who will go like, so it will say whatever it is, how to get, how to get front to back sharpness. And he'll go, hi, I'm, I'm not going to say his name. He'll go, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you five tips how to get front to back sharpness with a special mega amazing, amazing, a mega tip at the end, at the very end, that will help you to sell millions of copies of your photos. It's like always, there's always something at the end. Like, so it's like, you must watch all the way through. That's the thing as well. Like people now, they always, a lot of people now putting their photos at the end, aren't they? To try and get you to watch all the way through. And then they have their little gallery at the end. I'm not sure about that. Do you are do people, that? Have people not been doing that all the time though? No, the thing is I put mine at the end, but I tell people so they can skip past all the bollocks and just go yeah. straight to the pictures. No, I'm not, I'm not it's a public service announcement. I'm not, necessar <laughs> I'm not necessarily <laughs> complaining about it, but it's just odd that I find that odd. I'm like, if I take a photo, it's like, you, if I take a photo, if I'm like spending like, I don't know, five minutes of, of my video time talking about a photo, I want to show that photo. After yeah, that but five four minutes. minutes of it is you walking up slowly to the point where you're going to take it. It's true. Don't you think a lot of the videos these days just stink of desperation with a lot of the topics that they're coming out with? You know, oh, I found uh, something in the in my camera that does this, and I never knew it did it, and the everybody needs button. to know about oh, it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, all of a sudden it takes a picture, and I didn't realise it does. You know, it's like, oh, come on. You know, they're just creating stuff for the sake of it. It's desperation, and that's one of the reasons I, I don't what, put as much I, out. I, I put one up called How to Shoot Seascapes. It was deliberately, like, you know, clickbaity bollocks. Somebody wrote in and said, that's how you shoot Seascape. So I deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching, up yours. That was a really good video as well, Dave. It was. <clears throat> I've noticed, Dave, I've noticed, Dave, as well, you've started, putting, you've started putting little driving things at the beginning of yours. You've gone back to, like, I'm going to put a little, oh, watch me drive. Yeah. I've noticed that. You, you put a few, a few Exactly. I put bit. four seconds of driving just yeah. to set the scene. Yeah. Yeah, but I've, you don't do it in slow mo, Dave. So you know that's. Well, I was driving that's, slowly. That's, 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 I'm an old man. Ass, you know that's like you see, I'm no, like Reggie's old like, husband. Now you see driving, you got to speed that up. You can't have <laughs> going to a car park on two wheels. Yeah. <laughs> Driving's got to be speeded up. Driving in slow motion or normal motion is just like. Oh, sorry, I'm burping. <laughs> you're right there, Pete. I thought you were having a <laughs> shit. I'm having a bad week. I'm having a bad week. Oh, this is a, this is a, I tell you what, I've woken up every day for about the last two weeks with some sort of ailment. Like, oh, my back's hurting, my elbows hurting, my knees are hurting. And I tell you, what, I woke up the other day and I felt absolutely fine until I got downstairs and I had the shits. And I just thought, <laughs> this is my life now. I thought, now I've got to that age that now it's just every every morning there's something but the shit's topped it all <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's like me with mcdonald's breakfast i play russian roulette with eggs yeah i know yeah, we know yeah. we know <laughs> <laughs> if i have an egg it can go one way or the other oh yeah it really can. It can be. No, I'm fine. No, I'm, fi I'm on Rannock Moor. I'm fine. There's <laughs> <laughs> better Wait, be a Portaloo I've, somewhere. I've got three things in YouTube videos which really piss me off. Excellent. If I'm allowed to have, if if I'm allowed to yeah, have three you things. You are fine. The first, the first is unboxing. I don't. <gasps> yes. I don't yeah. understand what the hell someone wants to actually no I've got four things one is unboxing <laughs> the second one is reaction videos which I don't understand I love them <laughs> I love them no I don't I don't get it Sorry. the third is what's in my camera bag oh god yes. which mm. they, they wind me up I've and never some, done I, one of those I've never done I, one I, I, I did one, Never done one very early on, and I've had requests from people saying, oh, we'd really like to see what's in your bag. You don't want to see what's in my bag. I've got a camera in my bag. 
and some tissues and some lens cloths. (laughs) (laughs) And a dirty Mac. And the other thing which, the other thing which went, yeah, and it, <laughs> we should have played Kaplunk. <laughs> the, the other thing which winds me up is gratuitous drone footage. I don't mind a bit of drone footage, but when it's just drone footage thrown in pointlessly for the sake of putting your drone up, it's just pointless. So anyway, I, I, my I love the drone footage when. Like, okay, so if you're filming any bit of B-roll, right, any bit, like, take the drone out. If you're filming any bit of B-roll, would you film the bit where you go, let me just line that up, and then and then off? No, you wouldn't. You'd film the bit where you go. But with drone footage, some people, like, have got it where the drone's going, uh, where am I looking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now I'm going. <laughs> there, there was one, one I used to, one, one who did it, like, copiously, He'd be like, uh, he'd be like, so he was, let's say he was, uh, he, I don't know, but let's say that he got, he was at a waterfall, right, at the beginning of the video, and then he'd gone to a, a mountain in the next bit of the video, and then he'd gone to a beach in the next bit of the video, right? So the first bit of video is at a waterfall, got a bit of drone of the waterfall, and he'd go to the mountain and he'd start talking, and then you can see a bit of drone in the waterfall again. But you're not in the waterfall. <laughs> and then you go to the beach and you get a bit of drone of the waterfall and the mountain. You're, like, well, what? you're just literally filling here. You're just cutting over the top, but with totally random bits of drone. With the drone going, oh, oh, where am I looking? Oh, oh, me... Well, just going back to what Sam said, I, I have to disagree with the, the middle two. I do love a reaction video. And <clears throat> what's in my bag... I'm not particularly interested in what's in a photographer's bag, but I, I am... <laughs> Shopping bag. Yeah. I'm all over it. <laughs> all those tomatoes. <laughs> I'm interested in what's swag written on it. <laughs> Gary's... <laughs> Gal, you should do a what's in my McDonald's bag. <laughs> right. Just a black sack. Just pull it out like Big Macs, different cheeseburgers. Uh, <laughs> I do, I do like um, hiking what's in my bag or like different weights and stuff. But I did yep. watch a photographer once about what's in my bag. And this video was 45 minutes long. Right? What? Yeah. 45 minutes long. How big was his bag? No, no, no. Listen, it gets better. 45 <laughs> minutes long. And he didn't get to what was actually inside the bag. That was part two. 45 minutes it was all the What's stuff my back? What the, the whole world <laughs> on might that be somebody that we've heard of yeah i, I can't yeah. confirm or deny but but, but yeah Daz, on, sam you've got some more to, to well share. I, was, I was just gonna say i'm completely with you there does because yeah when it comes to hiking and stuff yeah that is interesting to know what people pack into their, their hiking bags and, yeah. and how to keep things light and whatnot but i yeah i think when it comes to photography stuff i think when it's a what's in my bag it's really just subtext for look how much okay. money i've spent on shit and i want to yeah. show it all off it's it's a type. The, the, my favorite one that i ever watched in, in terms of that is not what's in my bag it was my 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 vlogging gear yeah, and they went on to say, "Oh, I've got I've got this like brand new drone, and I've got this like uh, you know DSLR that I use for vlogging, and I've got this, but but you can just do it with a phone if you want to. It was called my ten thousand dollar vlogging gear, but you can just do it with a phone if you want to." Like, oh, thanks for that, mate. Can I can I can we just <laughs> joke joking aside, right? Yeah. For you, gal, and I am partly tongue in cheek. I'm not doing what's in my bag. But for McDonald's, no. <laughs> But I'm, well, you're not, you're no, I, I'm, I, no, I'm serious, right? I think you should start up a new channel because you enjoy your food, right? I think you could go to places like Greg's. And, <laughs> I tell you, I tell you what you should do, Dad. You should do. Few, you should do what's on, in yeah. my what's in my bin bag. <laughs> what's in my rubbish bag? I, what what, what takeaway have I thrown away this week? Far more money from doing. <laughs> Like literally reviews on food. I, I just, gal, start it up. I bet you your your views will outweigh your 
landscape photography it, videos by that says, that says a lot about my landscape there's, there's an insult in there as well I, no <laughs> yeah. it's not it's not it's I'll, call it, I'll, call it, I'll call it what's in my sack yeah, yeah. In, in all seriousness I reckon, yeah. what's, I reckon what's in my gut <laughs> that's what you need to call it what's, what's been in my what's gut what's in my week? belly <laughs> that's what you need to call it what's in my belly right well, reckon... this week we're going to you know yeah. diabetes yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's, there's, there's probably a gap in the market there though to combine photography you. with food like because it, it's a popular thing like we heavy bikers said, yeah. or the yeah. fishing thing with with um mortimer yeah. and and what's yeah, his name probably. it's like you can combine the photography Gal, with eating. start it up and yeah. thank me later you would be great at that All right. mm. All right. the trouble is i can't afford fast food in a in a few months so i'm a bit buggered I tell you what I was going to say though. Actually, what I was going to say was, is it, it, why do? If any of you guys watching, because I know some of you guys are vloggers out there. I know, I know you are, because you comment. Why don't you do a reaction video for the podcast? <laughs> How funny would that be? You could do a first watch of the podcast reaction video. That'd be yeah, great. but I, I, they'll get cancelled. People hanging themselves isn't a good look. <laughs> right, normally, right, a reaction video might go on for twenty minutes, but it's a, it's a, it's a five-minute video, and then they pause the video. We do this for an hour and a half. Their reaction videos would go two on for like five no, hours. Two and a half. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is going to be a long one, I think, and so have to suffer but look look i mean make the most of it because we're not around for a few weeks so you can chop um, all that nas drive stuff up oh god no, no that, was that, was, that was the best bit that was, that was the best bit <laughs> yes yeah. it was the only bit that, that had any relevance or interest chop a griff i want to see someone's reaction <laughs> chop, to that <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> i think you're right though there's a gap in the market for for pub uh, not pub um pasties and uh yeah. take away honestly nearby, yeah. do iconic it. locations there's yeah. a bloke that goes around doing eating challenges and he he's died. got about no 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 he's current he's <laughs> got about died, he, he's got hundreds of thousands of subscribers mm. and his video view counts reflect that unlike a lot of these channels with lots of subscribers and he goes to places that do oh you know eat our belly buster dinner and it's free and you've got to eat like three burgers and 27 sausages and a mound of chips but yeah. you've got to do it in 20 minutes and they've got a stopwatch and if you do it in the 20 minutes you don't pay for it and he goes around all these places that that do that and he's a really engaging chap but his his channel is, is that man is versus doing... food is that the one and that's the, the one, one man called... versus food he's he's yeah. a bit of a he looks like a hairy biker what, what have we what have we done <laughs> where have we gone it's quite the tangent just, isn't it <laughs> yeah i think there's there's nowhere else to go here is there i think uh, uh i think we'll call it a day at that point um mm. i want to want to thank you guys all for watching uh over the last season we really hope you've enjoyed it um yeah it's been it's been good isn't it we've we've we've, we've had a good time i think if no one else has but you know we will be back in the we'll be back in the autumn but hopefully we'll we'll get a few more out before then um and we will we're going to do a day aren't we we're going to we're going to arrange a day at some point in the peak district if we can and see if we can get a few people to come along and is that the one where you said that we would tell people when and where and then we wouldn't show up is that the one no it's the it's, it's it's the one look listen right i i personally i would love to have people coming up to our next meetup where it's just the six of us but you guys it's you guys who don't want anyone there i'd love to have them all there so i'm just saying i would love to have you here but yeah but it's already it's dave's awesome. house oh he's already yeah. trying to accommodate us six bless it or us five yeah. bless yeah, him we so could, we could we could we can have a meet up on on you know Lambert no Island. we do we do it in derbyshire because that's kind of fairly fairly central to most of us isn't it really is that so. near you dave Lambwin island mm -hmm. Lambwin, yeah is, oh. it, is she does she live around the corner from you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Landwin. Land. anyway <laughs> i am so looking forward to going back to wales i really am i can't wait for this 
You know, you know when Daz said he really hates it when people try and say goodbye. And oh, he... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I haven't got the door wide open. It's not like you know you're not freezing your tits off no, while true. I'm talking about where I buy my next lettuce yeah. from. Yeah. That's true. Someone else, someone else, just say goodbye because. Thank you for watching this series of the podcast. We really appreciate it. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you again before long. Bye. See you guys. Bye bye. See, see you. Bye bye. 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 See, that's how you do it, Dave. Brilliant. Yeah. That was really professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fancy editing? Not like series. yours, old bollocks. <laughs>